14 game winning streak for Vanderbilt coming to this afternoon. RJ Austin at the plate. Austin's a sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. Did not play on Tuesday against Belmont. He took a ground ball off the face in pregame. He's out for precautionary reasons. Back this afternoon, and he's in the hole 0-2. Coach Corbin told us he was very upset he couldn't play on Tuesday night kip. He's one of those kids that you don't want sitting in your dugout because he'd rather fight you than do that. But he had some symptoms that they had to watch. To mention, took a face in the pregame. It skimmed off the mound and, and hit him. Just a day-to-day -day thing. The one-two, two and two. Fly ball right field. Jackson camps under it. Here's Davis Diaz. Batting second in the lineup for Vanderbilt. Enters this afternoon with a 12 game on base streak. Junior from Pittsburgh, California. 286 hitter, he's the team leader in walks. Gets on base at a high clip. Eli Jones getting a head kick. Yeah, and that's the pitch we're talking about is the fastball command. He's mixed and matched a little bit so far, throwing a couple change-ups, but the fastball command is huge for Eli Jones. Diaz stays alive. Vanderbilt team that's top five in every major poll. Good offensive numbers, seventh in the nation in hits, sixth in the nation in steals, top 10 in doubles as well. Chopped to second, Noland, two down. Right now, Eli Jones doing a great job of getting into pitcher's counts, executing all of his pitches. He's thrown three pitches for strikes so far. The biggest thing is his command. Even at 91 to 95, he's, he's really not a guy that's going to overpower you, which is kind of crazy. But well, Jackson was playing almost at the fence whenever that pitch crossed home plate and a good running catch there and a 1-2-3 inning fix against him so far this season. Parker Nolan leading off. What do you think he's feeling, Kip, going up against his former team? Well, you definitely know he's excited. Uh, you know, in talking to Coach Corbin the other day, like we did, you know, he, he just, he's such a great kid. I mean, he, he mentioned, talked about his dad, his, his parents, his, his whole family. I mean, he's just, Coach Corbin does a wonderful job of getting to know these kids on and off the field. and. He's really happy for Parker being able to come in and, and play every day for South Carolina. And I think it just says a lot about Coach Corbin as a person as well as Parker Nolan. Nolan, a 270 hitter, enters today with an eight game hitting streak. Up high and the count evens at two and two. Four straight multi-hit games for Nolan. It was two for four with a couple of walks and a couple of ribbies on Tuesday against USC Upstate. First strikeout for Carter Holton. It's a hard slider there. That one just froze Parker Nolan. That was right down Broadway. He just was not able to pull the trigger. Holton's coming off his best start of the season last week against Auburn. Seven innings, four hits, one run, one walk, and nine strikeouts. Season high, 94 pitches. Cole Messina batting second, takes strike one. Yeah. 
junior from Somerville, South Carolina. He's the team leader in runs batted in. Tie for the team lead in homers. And leads his team in extra base hits. Coach Kingston coming out to have a chat with our home plate umpire, Jeff Head. Do you know what this is about, Kit? Yeah, the only thing I can think of is, is Holton really likes to work quick, and maybe Messina is not completely in there ready, but he needs to hold that right hand up and ask for time. But uh, maybe he was just thinking he was quick pitching him a little bit. But that's up to the hitter to make sure that he's asking for time with the home plate umpire. And like now, you see Messina getting in the batter's box pretty quickly. Grounded foul. I mentioned Jeff Head behind the plate. Our first base umpire is Hank Himmonen. Second base is Mayhew Edwards. And third base is Damian Beal. Once again, the one, two. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Holton. You're from Norfolk, Virginia. And the UNCG transfer takes strike one. Well, Holton's coming out throwing the kitchen sink already at the Gamecock hitters. He's throwing all four pitches for strikes. His fastball's been 94, 95. He's got the big overhand breaking ball, a curveball that's 78 to 80. Then he's got the hard slider. He threw it to Parker Nolan, and then the changeup to Messina after the breaking balls. Uh, he's, he's throwing everything. So South Carolina getting a good look at him early on. And three pitch strikeout to Kennedy Jones as Carter Holton. Strikes out the side. Yeah, incredible. Uh, what he has done at Vanderbilt has just been um, second to none. I mean, he's, he's just a, a wonderful human being and, and, and does things the right way. And, and just I think all of his players just absolutely love playing for him. And just really happy for Coach Corbin. Got to know him throughout the recruiting process for me. He was at Clemson at the time. And uh, it, I told him the other day on our phone call, it, it really was tough to say no to him. Um, as a Gamecock, obviously, it was a little easier to say no to Clemson, but not easy to say no to him. He's a, a wonderful recruiter. For a strikeout for Eli Jones, he gets Kojal, one down. A very authentic man to talk to as well. Yeah, he's uh, what you see is what you get, and uh, he truly cares about these kids, and it's, it's just exciting that, you know, we need no more Tim Corbins in the world. He, he does a wonderful job with these kids and helps them with so many things in life other than just baseball. One on one the count on the number five hitter, Jaden Davis. Sophomore from Cookville, Tennessee. Davis was one for four on Tuesday against Belmont. 22 game on base streak. He's been on base every game this season. And he enters this afternoon with an eight game hitting streak. Three and one the count on Davis. The other way, foul. Davis had a huge series last weekend against Auburn, was eight for 14, a couple of walks, scored six runs, drove in five. Three multi-hit games against the Tigers. Here's the three-two. Grounded to first, takes a high hop on Casas, who stays with it. Two down. Eli Jones looking for his second straight 1 2 3 inning. First, he'll have to deal with Troy Leneve. Senior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in his fifth year. Take strike one. Leneve was 0 for 3 with a walk on Tuesday against Belmont. Oh, 
was three for 10 with four walks last weekend against Auburn, scored a run in all three games. Drove in another. And Jones gets ahead one and two. Misses off the outside corner. Crowd wanted it, Kit. Yeah, it looks like it was a change up there. Hard change up. Came in at 88, 89 miles an hour. Just off the plate. Great pitch there from Jones. Here's the 2 2. Just misses inside. Canna's run full on Leneve. Got him. Second strikeout for Eli Jones. He gets Kozier. Afternoon against Vanderbilt. Yeah, if it's any indication what they're going to see the rest of the game, Holton was just on fire last inning, striking out the side. But again, he threw all of his pitches there. A lot of times you see starting pitchers Try to hold something back a little bit. I know when I used to pitch, I used to try to keep some things in my back pocket and be able to use them in the innings whenever there was tough situations, runners in scoring position, what, what have it. But he's coming out and just throwing everything at these guys, and that's his game plan right now. South Carolina's got to try to get his pitch count up to get him out of there. It's a two and two count on the cleanup hitter, Ethan Petrie. Now the count is run full. Petri, a very patient hitter, the team leader in walks on base percentage. It's a leadoff walk here in the bottom of the second. And I, I really think this could play into the Gamecocks' favor, uh, Dave. Uh, I really do because, again, all those Gamecock hitters are seeing and watching what he's doing. And, and he's literally thrown every single pitch he's got in his arsenal. So they're, they're getting uh, a visual of that and being able to watch it even when they're not up to bat hitting. Oh. Ekroy pulls that deep and foul. Junior from Belton, South Carolina, Talmadge Lecroy. Has a 10 game on base streak. to the count. Tough one on Tuesday against Upstate for Talmadge, 0 for 5 with a walk, but he had a solid series at Ole Miss. Four hits, a couple of walks against the Rebels. A big day on Sunday. Good eye, one and two. It's three for five against Ole Miss last Sunday. And sixth multi-hit game of the season. One and two the count on Talmadge Lecroy. Ethan Petri on first. Carter Holton. Golden Spikes preseason watch list for the second straight season. I'll check on Petri. what Holton did against Auburn before that five shutout innings with 11 strikeouts against Illinois State so he's had two straight dominant outings well, Holton had success to LaCroix here throwing the fastball in see if he tries to finish him off here in a 2-2 count with another fastball in Strike three. It's going to be the 
fourth strikeout for Carter Holt as we take another look. See, it took a little weird bounce there. I thought it might have hit him, but it just went off the glove there, and Talmadge was really not able to check his swing there. Good pitch there from Holton. I was literally just about to say he's thrown a lot of those breaking balls for strikes, but if he can show the righties that he'll bounce that ball too, that's going to make it a very effective pitch. We're seeing now early on why he's got the strikeout totals that he's got this season. Well, his stats against most teams, Kip, are very good, but not against South Carolina. The last season, he lasted just two-thirds of an inning, gave up four runs on two hits, four walks. He did 44 pitches to get those two outs. He just didn't have it against the Gamecocks. Vandy came back to win that game 8-5, to five, but even as a freshman at Founders Park back in 2022, one and a third, seven hits, seven runs, a walk and two strikeouts, and he suffered the loss. South Carolina won that game 8-2. to two. He's a terrific pitcher, but he has not pitched well against South Carolina. Yeah, sometimes certain teams just have your number and certainly know that he was probably aware of that going into this game, and he's certainly motivated to, to put some zeros up there. He's pitching very well so far. Jackson. Try to walk that off. Transfer from Charlotte, making his 11th start of the season. Back-to-back multi-hit games for Blake Jackson. It was two for five on Tuesday against Upstate. Oh. Lucky got him on the inner thigh there. Holton off the mound, throws down a second. Look at the force on Petri. Jackson reaches on a fielder's choice. A run on first, two down. That'll bring up Dylan Brewer. Four left-handed batters in the lineup for South Carolina against the lefty Carter Holton. Three straight and Jackson Brewer and Casas. Jackson has very good speed at first. He's four for five in steals so far this season. Always tougher to steal off a lefty kit, but you Kind of expect him to go here, just knowing that if he is thrown out, Dylan Brewer can lead off next inning. Yeah, I would definitely try to see if he can go, but I tell you, Holton's doing a great job of, of holding runners. He's quick to the plate. Diaz in foul territory, unable to get there. He's quick to the plate. He, he, he's lifting his leg, his, his right leg all the way up, but he's really quick. But most importantly, he's changing his hold times. He's not just coming set for a one count and pitching every time. He's he's changing his looks. He's varying those up. He's also changing his hold times and and really quick to the plate as well. This it'll be a tough tough guy to run on. Brewer in the hole, 0 and two. Two strikes, definitely a running count here. This is even where you could throw a fastball off the plate and try to get him to chase. If not, you get an easy pitch to throw on. Yeah, he's running there. Fastine tags out Jackson. That'll do it for the Gamecocks in the bottom of the second. We'll head to the top of the third. Scoreless. This is possible. Foul ball off the bat of Matthew Polk. Junior from Long Beach, California. 13th start of the season for Polk. Who has six multi-hit games in his first 12 starts, so half his starts, multi-hit games 
putting up good numbers. He was one for four on Tuesday against Belmont. Four for 15 last weekend against Auburn. One and two the count. Eli Jones, 19 strikeouts and 24 and a third coming into this afternoon. He has two so far. Ground ball to short. Tip it. One down. Another good slider there. Four straight sliders from Eli Jones there to retire Polk. And a good job by Tippett making the run and play there. Realizing that ball's not hit very well. He got out of the box good. Go ahead and charge it fully and get rid of the ball. That way if your throw is a little bit errant, your first baseman's got time to get off the bag and tag the runner if need be. Infielders will have to be quick against Vanderbilt. A lot of team speed. They've stolen 53 of 58 bases on the season. If you can get out of the box, this is one of the players that gets out very quickly, Calvin Hewitt. Stolen 14 bases so far this season. He's a senior from New Hampshire. Getting the opportunity to be a full-time starter with Austin at first and Maldonado out for the year. There's a strike. Now the count is run full on, on Hewitt. Yeah, and I think if Eli Jones had to do over again, he'd change his approach a little bit here to Hewitt. Hewitt hitting 322, obviously, but no home runs. He's that number eight hole guy, and he threw a 1 0 change up to him to go 2 0. Just feel like here with the number eight hole guy, throw your fastball, make him put it in play. See, that swing is not really a great swing against the 93 mile an hour fastball, and he knows the fastball's coming there. This is one of those at bats where you look back and you go, God, if I could have had him do something in two or three pitches, it would have uh, been a lot better. To the right side, Nolan's there. Two down. Eli Jones looking for his third straight one, two, three inning. Deal with the number nine hitter, Jonathan Vastein. Junior from Florida. Preseason second team, all SEC selection is Vastein. He and Jaden Davis, the only two to start every game this season. 329 hitter. You know your offense is good, Kip, when your number nine hitter is hitting 329. There's only one in the lineup for Vanderbilt that's under 300, and that's a number two hitter, Diaz, at 286. Two and two the count on Vastine. One for three in the midweek win over Belmont. Eli Jones likes to go fastball in the lefty sometimes to finish him off. This is a good chance right here to do it. And he went with the change up there. The holes on that inner half, if he wants to go hard in right here, he's got him set up for it. Strikes out Vastine. Another one, two, three inning. Not only what he took over, uh, he took over a program that was that was at the bottom, and I tell you, he has just uh, done a wonderful job for the Commodores 
in his tenure. These two teams certainly rivals. Coach Corbin told us, skipping our call, rivals oftentimes the people in your life who motivate you to get to where you want to be. You to appreciate your rivals. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in that conversation, you know, you, you mentioned Coach Jim Toman, former coach of mine that was a recruiting coordinator for many years here at South Carolina, a wonderful man, a wonderful coach, and, you know, he just kept saying, you know, every game I go to see out there, I always see Coach Toman recruiting. I'm like, I got to be there too. I, he motivated him to, to do a better job as a recruiter, and, uh, you know, Tim Corbin is uh, one of the best uh, recruiters in all of college baseball. The count is run full on Dylan Brewer. He's at the plate in the bottom of the second when picked off Jackson. High pop up. Austin in foul territory. You know, I've had conversations with Mark Kingston about uh, the, the head coach here at South Carolina as well as Ray Tanner, the athletic director. Is, South Carolina's got to start getting those guys to turn down some big money out of high school to be able to come in and end up, you know, increasing their value. You know, if they're going to be a late first rounder out of high school, try to get them to come to school and end up being a top five or ten pick. And that's what Tim Corbin has been able to do at Vanderbilt. Here's one of his former players, Gavin Casas, at the plate. Senior from Pembroke Pines, Florida. Fifth strikeout for Carter Holton, two down here in the bottom of the third. Well, I tell you, Holton is uh, pretty special. I mean, he is, you know, he's thrown the kitchen sink, but there and it's hard to see it if you're just watching on TV, but being around the game for a long time, he actually changed speeds there with his breaking ball. He took a little bit off of that to Gavin Casas. Boy, he is just dealing. Tip it. Past the third baseman Diaz and into left field. The first hit of the afternoon belongs to the number nine hitter, Will Tippett. Tippett gets a good fastball to hit, gets the head out. Good job there by Tippett. And you see the third baseman's playing in on the grass there because he knows Tippett's got good speed and he may try to lay a bunt down and that opens up a little bit of extra holes there for the hitter. Good piece of hitting by Tippett. Parker Nolan struck out his first time up against Carter Holton. Carter Holton struck out the side at the bottom of the first. Of course, two former teammates, Skip, who know each other well, play against each other in inner squads. Yeah, that's always fun. I mean, it, you know, Parker Nolan is uh, certainly, I'm sure, juiced up to try to get a hit against Holton, and Holton's doing everything he can to, to get him out. And, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's just different. You know, you've seen so many transfers now over the last several seasons, and just so different from when I was playing. You, you see guys switch teams a decent amount, and I'm sure they're having fun with it. Nolan's a fifth-year player. Four years at Vandy, 192 games with the Commodores. The count is run full. 50 pitches now for Carter Holton. Three balls, two strikes, two outs here in the bottom of the third. Tip it. We'll be on the move. Up the middle and through for a base hit. Back to back singles with two down for the Gamecocks. Tippett and Noland. First runner in scoring position this afternoon. Yeah, I didn't know if he hit it quite good enough to get it up the middle, but Good piece of hitting there by Parker Nolan. 
And a good decision by Tippett not to try to go first to third there. Center fielder was playing in there. As a base runner, you got to look and see where your outfielders are playing and also know their arms. They're watching their arms during infield, outfield. And we're going to see a mound visit here. And I think this is a good decision here to, to slow the game down. Big night on Tuesday against Upstate for Cole. Four for five. He homered in the first. Had an RBI double in the fourth. Hoping that carries over into this series. Takes a strike. And see, this is where I think the advantage goes to the Gamecock hitters. Because he's thrown all his pitches, Cole Messina, there's nothing that he hasn't seen yet. And I think that it gives the advantage to the hitter. Now it's a hitter's count, three and one. Ball four. Gamecocks have the bases loaded as Messina takes first. Nolan moves down to second, and Tippett advances to third. Second walk issued by Carter Holton. Bases loaded, two down for Kennedy Jones. Jones hits left-handed pitching very well. Takes a strike. Team's leading hitter. Three fifty seven average for Kennedy Jones. Grounded down the third base line. Sliding play made by Diaz. The long throw is high. Jones is safe. Tippett scores, and the Gamecocks take a one nothing lead. gets that off the end of the bat, but it's hit in a position where, great play by the third baseman, Diaz, but uh, you got Kennedy Jones who can run extremely well, and Gamecock's in business now. It's an RBI single for Jones. Base is loaded for Ethan Petrie. Two and oh. Tied for the team lead in homers with Cole Messina. They both have eight. Nowhere to put Ethan Petrie. Thomas Lecroy is on deck. Fans getting loud here at Founders Park. The 3-0, here's a strike. Nolan is on third, Messina's on second, Jones is on first. It's ball four. The base is loaded walk for Petri. Nolan comes in to score. South Carolina leads 2-0. And I, I really go back to the, the, the approach here from Holton. I think it's backfiring on him, Dave. I really do because the Gamecock hitters, they're just – they saw all of his pitches in the – I mean, the very first batter of the game, the first inning, I mean, just making a huge difference here. And Do you think that has something to do, Kip, with the fact that he just hasn't lasted very long in his past starts against South Carolina, so he wanted to really get out to a – a fast well, start? Uh, maybe, but it, and it may just be what he does and, and what, what he normally does. But South Carolina, 
you know, a team that obviously is very patient. They're walked, you know, they're they're leading the nation or close to leading the nation in walks. They do lead the nation. You know, so yep. it, it's to me it's just one where I'm looking at their batting averages and I'm going, you know what, I'm going to trust my 95 and I'm going to see how long I can go with throwing, you know, not just fastballs, but obviously not throwing the whole kitchen sink at them early in the game. And, and now South Carolina, the hitters, they just uh, they're, they're not going to be – the element of surprise is gone. Nicolay doesn't love that. Mm, neither does about 4,000 South Carolina fans. I think we'll see this crowd uh, continue to get larger as we're playing a doubleheader today. Big strikeout for Holton as he gets Lee Croy with the bases loaded. The Gamecocks. Opportunity for Eli Jones and the Gamecocks. Casas all alone on the right side. Flips to Jones. One pitch, one out. Well, that's just, you gotta love when the opposing hitter, after a long half inning, come out and swing at the first pitch and get an out. A lot of times, especially at the next level, you see a hitter take there. You just had your pitcher throw probably 25 pitches last inning, and it was an extended inning, long inning. You want to give him a little bit more of a breather. Davis Diaz grounded out his first time up, and he's 0 for 1, takes a strike. 2 for 4 with a ribby single on Tuesday, the midweek against Belmont. Serves this out to right. Jackson towards the corner, runs it down. Well, having Jackson out there, Kip, brings a little more range. And he's able to track that down and right. Yeah, and that's certainly not a knock on Petri uh, because, you know, Petri's played well out there, but I, I don't know if Petri gets to that one. I mean, that was a – I don't know if it ended up in foul territory or not, which there's not much room over there, but – Certainly a great catch there by Jackson. The SEC Player of the Week, Alan Espinal at the plate. Drives that deep to left. Jones will make the play. Oh, another one, two, three inning. For Only hitting 226. Line drive off the bat of Jackson, but right at Vastein. Hard hit, one down. They've made Carter Holton work the last couple innings. He had 14 pitches in the first, 20 more in the second, and then 35 in the third. Now 70 overall. Dylan Brew is 0 for 1. Popped up in foul territory. One and one the count on Brewer. Team leader in hits this season. Walked, stole a base, and scored a run on Tuesday against Upstate. One and two. Brewer had a tough series at Ole Miss, which is one for 13 with a ribby. Did he go? No. This is third base umpire, Damian Beal. Vanderbilt certainly thought they had Brewer. Let's take another look. Hmm. Yeah, got away with one there. Definitely went. Another opportunity now for Brewer, the 2-2. Seven strikeout for Holton. Two down. High breaking ball there. Seventy-five pitches now for Carter Holton. So face another former teammate, Gavin Casas. Casas struck out his first time up. Good. 
Colton was the nation's top rated left-handed pitcher coming out of high school, according to Perfect Game. Tossed three perfect games over the course of his high school career. A couple no hitters on top of that. He was drafted in the 19th round of the 2021 MLB draft by the Brewers. Opted to go to Vanderbilt. Popped him up. Diaz in foul territory will make the play. A one, two, three inning for Carter Holton. Commodores starting with Camden Kojal. Freshman from Omaha, Nebraska, batting cleanup for Vandy. Rips that foul. Eli Jones has been very efficient so far. Only 48 pitches now for Eli Jones. He's got to keep attacking these hitters and pitching with the lead. Charging is Tippett. One down. Jones continues to be incredibly efficient. So far, 51 pitches We're in the top of the fifth. Jaden Davis at the plate. Strike one on the transfer from Samford. It's the 2023 SoCon Freshman of the Year. Another opportunity for Tippett. Yeah, and this is one of those games, we talked about it early with Eli Jones, the fastball command, but today he's got, he's throwing three pitches essentially. He really hasn't thrown the curveball much, but he's throwing three pitches with a great deal of command. I mean, the best command. His fastball command is outstanding. His slider to righties has just been out really, really good as well. And his change up to lefties has been good. He's just, it, but it's all about the command. And when you get that, that's when it can be pretty special. We saw an outing or two before when Eli Jones, and he, he threw six innings and nothing was easy, right? He didn't really have his best stuff, but that just shows you the type of pitcher Eli Jones can be. And I just really love watching this young man. And on a day like today when he's got it all, it's pretty special. Yeah, his command is phenomenal. That's why the four walks last Friday at Ole Miss were uncharacteristic. Yep. Three and one the count on Troy Leneve. Struck out his first time up. Grounded a second. Nolan flips to Casas. Another one, two, three inning for Eli Jones. Georgia, Missouri are winless so far in SEC play. In the West, you got Arkansas at five and zero. Oh. Alabama two and one, Mississippi State three and two, LSU two and two, Ole Miss two and two, and then A and M at two and three, and Auburn at zero and five. Auburn was swept by Vanderbilt last weekend. You know, I talked to a lot of Gamecock fans this past week, and they were, you know, disappointed about the one and two weekend at Oxford. But, you know, that win on Sunday was huge. They played a really good game. And to get out, to not get swept is, is a good thing. When you go on the road and you lose the first two, that Sunday it's almost a must-win situation. And they played a complete game that day. They, they played very, very well, and that was a big win for them. Yeah, Coach Kingston said, I told the guys, it's, it's really hard to play as well as we did on Sunday on the road in the SEC after two frustrating days. And he was really proud of the resolve that they had. It showed a lot. Get a win, salvage a series, pick up the win in the midweek. That momentum rolling for this weekend series here at home against Vanderbilt. They lead 2-0 in the bottom of the fifth. 
2-0 no the count on the leadoff hitter, Parker Noland. Jammed, but that's going to drop foul. Not that might be a fair ball. Fortunately, no hit for Nolan. He'll come back to the batter's box. Nolan has one of the hits so far this afternoon for South Carolina. He's one for two. Hit and a run scored in the bottom of the third. Count evens at two and two. Last season with Vanderbilt, he hit 277, nine homers and 39 runs batted in. Called strike three. Nine strikeouts for Carter Holton. Yeah, went with the slider to get the second strike and then back to the big breaking ball for strike three. That's nine on the day now for Holton. Well, I could see him developing into a, a, a lefty matchup guy in the big leagues it's a nightmare he, he, the, the fastball command for me is is not there enough to be a starter in the big leagues watching now but uh, obviously I think that's probably because he's not throwing many fastballs you know the breaking balls he's throwing a lot and I think when he gets to the next level they'll probably throw the fastballs a little bit more with him uh, because again I mean there's a change up there he's just uh, he's throwing a lot of his pitches Grounded foul. Cole Messina, 0 for 1 with a walk so far. He struck out in the first and walked in the third. 1 and 2 the count. The Gamecocks catcher. Pitch up high, 2 and 2. Run full. He has walked three this afternoon. Popped him up. In foul territory. This is Austin. Attacks the first pitch, serves it to right. Coming on is Jackson, and he makes the play. Sparkling right field play so far this afternoon from Blake Jackson. Let's take another look. Yeah, good piece of hitting there from Polk. Unfortunate for him. Jackson's out there in right. Good play. Once again, Eli Jones attacking these Vanderbilt Commodore hitters. This is Calvin Hewitt. He would ground it out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. It was 1 for 3 with a run scored and a stolen base on Tuesday against Belmont. It's 14th steal and 15 tries. Comes into the series third in the SEC in steals. Out, want to keep off base. He stole home earlier this season against FAU. Count evens at two and two. Ground ball to second. Nolan, two down. Go, 
Here's the number nine hitter, Jonathan Vastine. He was a strikeout victim his first time up. Go no. This is Damian Beal. Vastine had a very good series last weekend against Auburn. Seven for 12 with a hit by pitch. Seven ribbies. Hit a two run homer on Friday and a multi hit effort on Saturday, including an RBI triple. And then went four for five on Sunday. It's quite a series. There's a strike. One. Jones battling back. The count is full. Call strike three. Fourth strikeout for Eli Jones. He gets Vastine looking. Here's Ethan Petrie. Holton approaches 100 pitches, creeping up on it. He's certainly looking for an efficient bottom of the sixth. Gets ahead of Petri 0-2. Couple of walks so far this afternoon for Petri. One with the bases loaded for an RBI. It was in the bottom of the third. There's a two out rally for South Carolina in the bottom of the third that led to their two runs. An RBI single from Kennedy Jones and a base loaded walk, courtesy of Ethan Petrie. 100 pitches for Holton. 101 and a full count. stays alive. Ethan Petrie, since he's reached base twice already this afternoon, he has a 32 game on base streak that dates back to last season. Finished last season with a 10 game on base streak. And 22 now this season. It's ball four. Petri has walked for the third time this afternoon. Continues to show an incredible eye and great patience. Yeah, and I just think that comes from, you know, one, he's got a great ability. But two, I, I think he play, does a wonderful job of playing for the name on the front of the jersey, not the back. Uh, you know, Petri's a guy that's, you know, obviously South Carolina very lucky to have him a part of the program, but he's just a great team player and, and he takes what the game gives him. And right now, after the season he had last year, he just doesn't get a lot of great pitches to hit and guys are pitching around him. Spinell stays in front of that. One and one the count. Season high in pitches already for Carter Holton. Off speed for a strike. Good three second hold there from Holton. Making sure to keep Petri close. That was a running count potentially. Two 
Two and two the count on the number five hitter, Talmadge Lecroy. Petri takes his lead off first. was on the move there, Kip. Yeah, and, and Holton right now, you can see the velocity starting to dip down just a little bit. He's certainly towards the end of his day, and South Carolina would love to knock him out in this inning. Don't let him finish this inning. South Carolina in the middle of the order here. would like to extend that 2 nothing lead. He strikes out Leecroy. Now they have Petri. The throw gets away. It bounces past Austin. And Petri will go to second. Gamecocks will have a two-out runner in scoring position. You don't see that happen much at this level. That was a great job by Petri to stop there. He was dead at second. Make them make that throw. Get Petri at third. A ball that gets away here. I would be super aggressive if I'm Petri to try to score. A wild pitcher pass ball. Error on the second baseman, Davis. One of them on the count on Blake Jackson. Jackson reaching a fielder's choice in the second, lined out in the fourth. To the right side, Davis retires Jackson. That'll do it for the Gamecocks in the bottom of the sixth. The pitcher's duel here so far today. Top of the order for Vandy. First pitch swing through the right side. A base hit for R.J. Austin. That's the first hit of the afternoon for Vanderbilt. And I thought we may see 6,000 fans stand up and give Eli Jones a, a, a nod there. Maybe they're uh, into the brewskis a little too much and weren't paying attention, Dave. I don't know. but. Six innings of no hit ball in the SEC is certainly worth a, a standing ovation. He has been just awesome today. Yeah, I agree 100%. Runner on first, nobody out. Davis at the plate is 0 for 2. He grounded out in the first and flew out to right field in the fourth. RJ Austin at first leads the team in stolen bases, 15 of those. Oh, might see Cole Messina go out and talk to him here. This a lot of times you, as a pitcher, when you give up that first hit late in the game, it, it can be emotional, and, and you've got to make sure you settle back down and, and continue to attack the hitters and trust your stuff. You know, it, in the day and age of, of, of shifts, if, if you're not shifting, that's a ground out. I mean, that ball was hit weakly right at the second baseman, but obviously they had the shift going on. It's the only reason the base hit was there. Now a check on Austin. Andy, as I mentioned earlier, leads SEC in stolen bases. Austin has 15 of them. Hewitt has 14. And check on him again. It's over 90% so far success rate for Vanderbilt, sensational number. They're not that far off from last year's total already. That was with Enrique Bradfield, who had about half of them. And I asked Coach Corbin just about recruiting speed or just athletes that fit his style. And, and Kip, he said, I think athletes. I was always focused on looking at taller, leaner athletes that played other sports that can adapt well when it comes to spatial awareness and understanding what's around them, having a good feel for athletics and competing. It's a walk to Davis, two on, nobody out. He said just being able to play every day, availability is everything when you're an athlete, and we choose to move towards that. Not every player, of course, is like that. Some are more strong-bodied, like some of the players certainly here at South Carolina. But he said, I think athleticism and movement is really important inside of our program. Yeah, and it doesn't surprise me, Coach Corbin. know what you're going to do here. I think it's a gift if they're going to bunt and take the out, but uh... – Eli Jones is in a little bit of trouble right here. 
Chopped up the middle, Noland, his only play at first. One down, productive out off the bat of Espinal as the runners move up to second and third. Yeah, and here if you're Eli Jones, you're just looking to get two more outs. If you give up one run, that's okay. Uh, pitch with a lead here, it's two to nothing. You got first base open, you got a lefty up, you got a righty on deck. Know the situation here. If you get to two strikes on this guy, you can go for the strikeout, but wow, we're gonna see a change here. Man, I think this is. The pinch hitter for Vanderbilt is Jack Bolger. So they pinch hit the right hands or against Veach, who has that devastating change up. 0 oh, 2 the count on Bolger. Each with 22 Ks and 14 innings so far this season. Up the middle, tip it. Retires Bolger at first, a run scores for Vanderbilt. They're on the board. South Carolina leads two to one as Austin comes in to score. Davis advances to third on the play. Runner on third, two down for Jaden Davis. Davis was 0 for 2 against Eli Jones. Ground outs in the second and the fifth. Off the glove of Tippett. Diaz will score. We're tied at two here in the top of the seventh. Change up there from Beach and balls hit fairly well, but a play that Tippett definitely should have made, and now we're all tied up. Give Davis a single. RBI single for Jaden Davis. Runner on first, two down for Troy Leneve. Neve 0 for 2, he struck out in the second, grounded out in the fifth. Neve second on the team and runs batted in behind RJ Austin coming into this series. One and two the count now on Leneve. Davis leads off first. Just missing off the outside corner. Gets a piece. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top of the seventh. Two in this half inning for Vanderbilt. Neve putting a tough at bat on Veach. Five-year player. He's been at Vandy since 2020. Got him. Veach strikes out Leneve. That'll do it for Vanderbilt in the top of the seventh, but they get two. It's a tie game. I, I, I didn't agree with that call. 
shortstop. That ball was hit hard, but I, I thought that should have been an error on the shortstop. But uh, the line doesn't look nearly as good as it certainly probably should have for Eli Jones. He pitched remarkable today. Gamecocks have three hits so far. They'll have to add to that total. Brewer at the plate. Two and another count on the fifth year player, Dylan Brewer. And 329, a couple homers. 15 driven in on the season. Pulls that to right. It's a base hit for Brewer. Rounds first and will stay there. Fourth hit of the afternoon for South Carolina. The leadoff man aboard here in the bottom of the seventh. about keeping your hands inside the ball. Watch Brewer here. Really good job there. It's the only way that ball's hit hard and stays fair. Good piece of hitting by him as he continues to have a very good season for the Gamecocks. He's their team leader in hits. Picks up his 25th hit of the season. Casas showing bunt, pulls it back. Casas struck out in the third, popped up in foul territory in the fourth. He has one sacrifice this season. Check on Brewer. Brewer is eight of 10 so far this year in steals. Second on the team behind Will Tippett. Again, pulls it back. 2-0 the count. Yeah, Brewer at first base here needs to really make sure he gets a good secondary. See that bunt down, but he's got to get a good secondary to get a good jump. The third baseman's coming in pretty tight. He's getting in really close here. A hard bunt from Casas to third. He still may go to second base. Obviously, Casas wants to bunt the ball here towards first base, if at all possible. It's punted foul. Now, the only thing with leaving Casas in here to bunt, if you're wanting to bunt in this situation, you thought you may see a pinch hitter here. I would think Casas is not one of the better bunters on the team. He's probably not been asked to bunt very much in his life. Again, showing bunt and throw over to check on Brewer. Casas gets it down. Green throws over to first. So the sacrifice successful for Gavin Casas. Gamecocks have a runner in scoring position with one down. RBI opportunity upcoming for the number nine hitter, Will Tippett. Tippett, a switch hitter, batting from the right side this afternoon. He's one for two. Singled in the third, scored a run. Struck out last time up in the fifth. Tippett was 0 for 2 with three walks on Tuesday against Upstate. Stole two bases, scored three runs. Gonna bring in one here. Two and one the count. It's a 
seventh appearance of the season for Green. He's pitching to a 1.12 ERA. Opponents hitting just 185 against him. Count evens at two and two. Speedy Brewer leads off second. They'll throw him back. There's a good inside move there from Green. Our Owls 10U baseball team were working on a little bit of inside moves earlier this week in practice. Green strikes out Tippett, who does not agree. Let's take another look here, Kit. It was a good breaking ball. I thought that was inside, but it's got a lot of break to it. That may have caught the inner black of the plate. Tippett certainly didn't think so. Nevertheless, two outs now. It's going to take a two-out hit for South Carolina. They are three for eight today with two outs. One of those hits belongs to Parker Nolan, who's at the plate. He's one for three. Singled in the third, part of that two-out rally that scored two runs. To the right side, Austin has some trouble, and Nolan is safe at first. South Carolina has runners at the corners. With two down. RJ Austin's a center fielder playing first for Vanderbilt. Well, that was a great job by Park, Parker Nolan going full speed down the first baseline. And see there he dives. It's not really going to get you there faster, but I think he may have been doing that in case he needed to potentially dodge a tag there from the first baseman. And Maldonado out for the year. They moved Austin to first. So did Hewitt at center field. He's still getting used to that position. Second error of the afternoon for Vanderbilt. Runners at the corners, two down. Messina at the plate. Espinal lost it for a moment, but recovered. That was a good stop there. I thought that ball was going to get to the backstop when it left his hand. One and one the count on Cole Messina, who's 0 for 2 with a walk. Struck out in the first, walked in the third, popped up in foul territory in the fifth. One and two. Leads off third, Nolan off first. Chopped to third, off the backhand of Diaz. Brewer will score. South Carolina takes the lead, three to two. That's why you want to put the ball in play. Vanderbilt right now is just kicking themselves should be another error there. That should have been the end of the inning. Two, two plays in a row. South Carolina needs to take advantage here and try to extend the lead, get a base hit to get a big lead again. First and second for Kennedy Jones. 
They give Messina an RBI single. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Home cooking. I mean. Sure, he'll take it. Well, Messina runs well down the line, though. Might have been He does. I, I looked at it where he was, and if, if he would have, after he bobbled it, if he would have got it with his bare hand, he was still out by two or three steps. I mean, that's that, that should be an error. Um, but uh, nevertheless, the Gamecocks are up three to two. For a clutch two out hit from Kennedy Jones. One and two the count. Jones entered the starting lineup for the first time on February 25th against Belmont. Had a leadoff homer in the bottom of the first. Has started every game since. And the runners will move up to second and third as that one got away from Espinal. an even better two out RBI opportunity kit for Kennedy Jones. Yeah, this is big here. I still feel like this is a, this is a game that South Carolina needs to win at home. They were in command the whole game. This is where you need a big piece of a two out hitting here. Two out, two strikes. Base hit here, this place should erupt. Nolan leads off third, Messina off second. The three, two. It's ball four. And the bases are loaded for South Carolina with Ethan Petrie due up. The All-American has walked three times this afternoon. One of them with the bases loaded, that was in the third. Meeting on the mound for Vanderbreen. Petri can open this game up here for the Gamecocks with a base hit. Kennedy Jones runs well. He's at first base. A double could easily score three. Fouls off the first pitch. Another multi-hit game for Petri on Tuesday against Upstate was two for three with three walks. He's walked three times this afternoon. No, sorry. <laughs> I guess my boo was a little bit early. He's been calling the high strike uh, on the breaking ball today. Jeff Heed has behind home plate. Um, that one looked really high. Fights one off. I'll get you in trouble up here, Dave. My bad. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> you felt the same way everyone did here at Founders Park. Own to the count on Petri. Nolan's on third. Messina's on second. Jones is on first. Pitch up high. Petri hit his eighth homer of the season. 31st of his college career on Tuesday, now tied for 20th all time in South Carolina history. Next up is old teammate Braylon Wimmer with 32. Homered last weekend at Ole Miss as well. A couple of hits in that series. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Bases loaded for the Gamecocks. Preseason first team All-American, first team All-SEC, Ethan Petri. Going to deliver for South Carolina. The 2-2. Two -two. He's making Horn work. He is. All those pitches he's fouling off are on the black. They're, they're pitches that he knows if he hits fair, he's probably going to get himself out there. So Petri doing a good job of just fouling them off, 
keeping the at bat alive. Now the count is run full. There's nowhere to put Ethan Petri. Now you see Petri laughing there. He knows he probably should have wore that one. Petri unloads. Left center, it's gonna stay in the park. It's off the glove of the center fielder, Hewitt. Three runs will score. And South Carolina opens up the lead six to two. I thought that might be gone off the sound of the bat. The wind blowing in strong from center field. Stayed in the park. But Hewitt, has he just lost this one, Kit? Yeah, I mean, it, it was a bomb. I mean, just today is the day that it doesn't go out at this time. But, you know, we talked about the wind all day today, and it's it's tough. It's, it's blowing probably 15 miles an hour, and sometimes it's blowing in, sometimes it's blowing in to right, and it's just uh, that's a, he had a long way to run for that ball, too. Uh, but that's just a great job of hustling by Petri. Now he's at third base, and... I would certainly think that goes down as an error, but I thought the last one would too. But either way, three runs scored for the Gamecocks. The third error of the afternoon for Vanderbilt. Yeah, I mean, that, on, on any, on, on a lot of days here, Dave, that ball is over those trees out there, to, over the bullpen. I mean, that that was a bomb. Three and one, the count on Talmadge Lecroy. He's looking to reach for the first time this afternoon. run full. <laughs> Serve to right. It's a base hit for Lecroy. Petri will score an RBI single for Talmadge Lecroy. South Carolina leads 7-2. Boy, that's a great piece of hitting there from LaCroix. Gets the slider away and just flicks the bat out there. Great piece of hitting. Clutch two out RBI single off the bat of Talmadge LaCroix. And a five run half inning. South Carolina not done. Jackson at the plate. This afternoon, he reached on a fielder's choice in the second, lined out in the fourth, and grounded out in the sixth. It's the ninth Gamecock to come to the plate here in the bottom of the seventh. Surrendering two runs in the top of the seventh to tie the game. They've scored five in the bottom half of the inning. Popped him up. Leneve coming in from left in foul territory. Makes the play. Gets out of the way of Diaz. Um, uh, you know, out here, we, that's normally a home run. But um, big response from South Carolina. Now they need a shutout inning here to, to, to keep Vandy off the scoreboard here and, and win this first game of the series. That's driven deep to left. Off the bat of Polk, and it's gone. Solo home run from the number seven hitter, Matthew Polk. 
Third run of the afternoon for Vanderbilt. Fourth homer of the season for Polk. Hewitt fouls that back. Should tell you about the defensive changes for South Carolina. Stone is now in center. And Brewer has moved over to right. Jackson has moved over to left. So they get their best defensive outfield out there, Kit. Yeah, we see Mark Kingston do that a good bit late in games, going with the defense over the offense. And Obviously the plan is you hope that to, to be able to keep them away from scoring and not needing the, the bats in the lineup at, at, at the latter part of the game. So it's up to, the, he's, he's putting his uh, you know, money on, on, on the Gamecock pitching staff and defense to be able to win the rest of this game. And a four run cushion here in the top of the eighth. Tune to the count on Calvin Hewitt who's 0 for 2. Grounded out in the third and the sixth. High pop up. Noland retires Hewitt, one down. Bring up the number nine hitter, Jonathan Vastine. Vastine 0 for 2, a couple of strikeouts. Both of those were against Eli Jones. Ground ball to second. Noland. Tires Vastine. Back to the top of the order, and RJ Austin, who singled his last time up, he's one for three. Singleton scored a run in the seventh. Extend his hitting streak to eight games. A really nice series last weekend against Auburn. Six for 13. A couple of walks. Hit by pitch a couple times as frequently on base. Scored five runs, drove in six. Two and one the count on Austin. He just misses. It's ball four. Two out walk for RJ Austin. He's aboard for the second time this afternoon. Here's Davis Diaz. Take strike one. Speedy Austin takes his lead. Oh. 
Each gets ahead one and two. Fans looking for a strikeout here at Founders Park. Chase up and away. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top of the eighth. RJ Austin leads off first. Now the count has run full. Now they'll release Austin. Strikes out Diaz. Chris Beach fired up. Bandy will leave a runner on first. They do get one. Win this first one and, and try to sweep uh, the day today. Go ahead and win the series. They're on track to do so. They lead seven to three here in the bottom of the eighth. Dylan Brewer at the plate. Brewer's one for three. Singled his last time up in the seventh, scored a run. Yeah, and right now, I mean, they've got the four-run lead. You know Mark Kingston would love to get an, an extra run or two here, and you know, if they could break it open pretty big right here, you may see him try to run somebody else out there other than Veach. You know, them going to Veach early like they did, taking Eli Jones out in the seventh um, and bringing in Veach, it, it, it certainly was a bold move and going ahead and trying to, you know, win that first game, bringing in your stopper in, in the seventh. Um, so it's, you know, anytime you you do that, especially with the, the short weekend now, you got a doubleheader today and a game tomorrow, depending on how, you know, Long Beach goes today, it, it could even affect him for tomorrow. I would certainly think he's not gonna be pitching game two. There goes Brewer, no throw from Espinal. Ninth stolen base of the season for Dylan Brewer. Certainly expected him to be aggressive, looking for some insurance here in the bottom of the eighth. Casas through the left side and past the diving Vastine. Brewer rounds third, and RBI single for Gavin Casas. South Carolina leads eight to three. And Casas was probably looking to pull the ball there, but perfect base running there from Brewer. Going back there on that ball that was on the ground to the left side, making sure it got through, and he scores easily. Continues to do damage this season for South Carolina. Batting seventh, but leading off the inning. He gets on, steals a base, scores a run. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, Mark Kingston talked about it early in the year. It's just a guy that he, he just can't take out of the lineup. I mean, he's just doing too much of the little things, and and uh, I'm certainly happy for him. He, he's, a, he's a guy that struggled at the plate at times last year, played in a lot of different positions. Uh, probably didn't know what he was doing when he got to the ballpark every day, but he's done a great job and hitting the ball very well. they go to second. Nice pick made by Vastine. Get the lead runner in Casas. Not the best of throws from Horn. Yeah, but you got Casas running there. It's, it's got to be a, almost a really good bump that can't be back to the pitcher there. All with a five-run lead, Mark Kingston may just let him swing it there, maybe do a hit and run or something, but elected to sack bunt. I already sent Brewer, you expect Tippett to go here. Nine for nine so far this season in steals. Yeah, I would. Um, 
you know, Horn has not been very quick to home plate, so I definitely think this would be a situation where I would, I would, I'd give him the green light, let him go. Parker Nolan's one for four, singled back in the third. There goes Tippett, the throw from Espinal. is in time to get Tippett. They may review this. We will have a review, Kit. Yeah, I, I think you should here. I, watching it live, I really thought he beat it. It's a good pick there by the shortstop. I thought his left hand got in there. Here's a good view here. Yeah, I think he's safe. Stein handle a couple of throws. His overturn to safe. So Gamecocks steal their second base of the inning. First Brewer, now Tippett. Another runner in scoring position for South Carolina. I agree with you, Kip. I like the aggressiveness as well. doesn't run nearly as much as Vanderbilt coming into this series 28 of 34 on the season. Vandy 53 of 58. They've gotten a couple here in the bottom of the eighth. Jeff Head will give Espinal a breather. Two and one the count on the former Commodore Parker Noland. Nolan had a good series at Ole Miss last weekend. Two hits in each game. Six for 12 against the Rebels. For a multi-hit game here. Single back in the third. Three and one the count on Noland. Tippett leads off second. Rounded to the right side. Austin will flip to Horn. Tippett advances to third. Perfect execution of a little PFP there. Pitcher's fielding practice. Ground ball to the right side. Pitcher goes to cover first, and first baseman fields it, flips it to him, gets it to him early, catches the ball. Chops his feet, tags first, and looks over towards third base, making sure that he's aware of the runners. Cena had an RBI single his last time up. That was in the seventh. He's one for three with a walk. Team leading 22 runs batted in so far this season for Cole Messina. This is game 22, so he's averaging a ribby per game. Pitch outside, two and one the count. Two out walk for Cole Messina. Gamecocks have runners at the corners. I remember Kennedy Jones was lifted for defensive purposes, so the batter in the number three spot right now will be Evan Stone. Evan's a 
junior from Irmo, South Carolina. Did he take too long, Kip, getting into the box? What's the call here? I guess so. I think that's what he's saying. I'd go I rate too if you're my Mark Kingston. I understand the speeding up of the, you know, the, what what the rules are now, but it, 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 this is what happens. Now, now, now how long is this going to be a delay, Dave? I mean, I. It's just, Gonna say no strike. They're gonna take it away. I'm trying to read lips, Kip. Yeah, I know. Me too. But looks like they're gonna take it away. So no strike on Stone. Evan was a defensive replacement on Tuesday against Upstate. And a solid game at the plate. Against the Spartans, two for three, scored a run. He's three for five at the plate this season. Limited opportunities, obviously, that's a 600 average. Drives that to left. Leneve is there, and he makes the play. It was well hit by Stone. Vanderbilt coming in, hitting 326 on the season to hold this team to three hits through eight innings pitched is, is remarkable for South Carolina. One on the count on Espinal. Got a four for four day with a couple of walks last Saturday against Auburn. It's the monster series. Four multi-hit games last week for Espinal and earning that SEC Player of the Week award. And he went. Two and two the count. Twenty-one game on base streak on the line for Espinal. The count has run full. will continue. 22 games now for Espinal as he works a leadoff walk here in the top of the ninth. Feech is, is used to, you know, getting a lot of strikeouts and, and getting those outs on that changeup. He's got to make an adjustment here. I mean, it's, you got to pitch the scoreboard. It's eight to three. The last thing you want to do is walk guys right now. Strike one to Jack Bolger. He pinch hit for Kojal in the seventh and grounded out. Each ahead 0-2. Dealing with a hamstring issue, missed a couple of weeks between February 25th and March 15th. Came back last weekend against Auburn. Sold for five, but had an RBI ground out. Line to center, and unable to make the play is Stone. It's typically sure handed in center. Bit of a tough play, wind of course blowing in. Take another look. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened there. It didn't look like he got the greatest of jumps. I thought, I'm really not quite sure there what happened. I know it is a tough day with the wind, but you're right, Stone normally is a guy that, that makes that play. He's an outstanding center fielder. I've seen him make Unbelievable plays his whole career here at South Carolina. Oh, they gave that a hit, Dave. Yeah. It 
his teams there were consistently among the national leaders in pitching categories. South Carolina up at the top this season. Fifth in the nation in ERA coming into this afternoon. Eighth in the nation in hits allowed and whip. Two and two the count on Jaden Davis. Now the count is run full. First and second, nobody out. Espinal leads off second, Bulger leads off first. High fly ball, right center. Stone retires Davis. South Carolina's two outs away. Bring up Troy Leneve, who is hitless so far this afternoon, 0 for 3. Two strikeouts in relief of Eli Jones. One of them at the plate right now, Troy Leneve. First and second, one down. The one, two. Two and two. him up. Lee Croy comes up with it. Two down here in the top of the ninth. Not an easy play in foul territory, Kip. No, that wasn't. I tell you what, the athleticism that LaCroix shows here, you see changes. He's trying to get behind the ball and turn his body a little bit better. Ah, that's a good play. He did not have a good angle going at first there and made an adjustment mid-flight. Good stuff there from LaCroix. Here's Polk who homered his last time up. He takes a strike. The fourth home run of the season for Polk. The others against Houston, Illinois State, and Indiana. That's a fair ball down the third base line. Espinal scores. Bolger stops at third. It's an RBI double for Polk. Vandy tacks on another run. They trail eight to four. Yeah, I think we'll see a replay here. God, watching it live, I, I thought it was a foul ball, uh, Dave, but man, it obviously was hit hard. It happened so quick. I guess we'll see. Kingston is talking it over with Jeff Head. Well, 
It's an RBI double for Polk. Second and third, two down. Vandy trying to rally here in the top of the ninth. Calvin Hewitt at the plate. for three this afternoon, grounded out in the third and the sixth, popped up in the eighth. With another 2-0 count, here comes Coach Williams. Looks like he's gonna make a pitching change. Midway through this at bat, we'll take a break, tell you about the new Gamecock pitcher when we come back. Cox will bring in the left-hander, Garrett Ganey, transfer from Liberty. He's been excellent so far this season. Yeah, you see 19 strikeouts, only three walks, only giving up four hits and an 11 and a third with a sub one ERA. Garrett Ganey's got an electric arm, 92 to 95 with a slider and a changeup. He's a starter at Liberty, but he's, uh, since going to the bullpen, he's been throwing that two-seamer more um, in the past. Now he's using the four-seamer. It's got tremendous carry on it. And uh, Ganey, we've seen him this year multiple times. He's just been electric out of the bullpen. He enters with a 2-0 count on Hewitt. Two and one. Cox are now one strike away. His count is even at two and two. That hits Hewitt. So the bases are loaded for Vanderbilt. Trailing by four, bring the tying run to the plate. Jonathan Vastine. Left on left matchup, Vastine's 0 for three. Bases loaded, two down. Ground ball to second. Nolan retires Vastine, and South Carolina defeats Vanderbilt eight to four. Eight runs on seven hits and no errors. For Yeah, welcome to the streets where the hustle never sleeps. Concrete jungle where every corner's got secrets to keep. From the neon lights to the graffiti on the wall. This is the life we live where we stand tall in the heart of the city where dreams collide. We navigate the alleys with swagger and pride. From the buskers on the corner to the vendors in the stalls. This is the rhythm of the streets where the wild calls. Street life where the beats never stop From dusk till dawn We're on top In the chaos and the noise We find our groove This is the street life This is how we move From the skaters on the sidewalk to the b-boys in the square This is where we come alive, where we show we care With every step we take, we leave our mark In the tapestry of the streets, where we embark From the stoop conversations to the midnight races This is the life 
We live in all its different faces in the rhythm of the streets We find our flow, this is the street life where we let it all go Street life where the beats never stop From dusk till dawn, we're on top In the chaos and the noise, we find our groove This is the street life, this is how we move